Princess Memories. Oh. <laughs> So welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first time here. Vinyl Monday is usually the series where once a week I sit down and just talk about a classic album I love. But for the entire month of May, it is Mod Month. For the entire month of May, I'll only be covering albums from the last 20 years. You'd be surprised just how many connections this stuff has to the material I usually cover. Episode 1 was last week, Radiohead's in Rainbows. If you missed that and 20 minute episodes aren't your thing, don't worry. I also do Vinyl Monday in 60 seconds, both here on my channel and over on my Instagram. So I've celebrated some big anniversaries on this series. I did a 25th, I've done a couple 50th, there's a 30th coming up at the end of the month, but this week we're celebrating this album's 10th anniversary. Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. I know, very atypical for this series, but you'll find this record has stronger roots in what I usually cover than you might think. Congrats to those who guessed this one. Remember, if you want to play along, all you got to do is check out my community tab. That's where I host the little game of which album I'm going to cover next. I was so proud of the people who guessed last week. I have no idea how this coming week is going to fare, but let's take the plastic off this one. So right off the bat, this copy is very special to me. Random Access Memories was the first double album that I ever bought. I was 18, I was going into my second ever semester of college, and instead of taking my textbook money to the school store to go buy my books like a good little girl, I took it to the mall with my friends. I went into a Newbery Comics, I bought Random Access Memories, along with the other great pop double album of the 2010s, Tame Impala Currents. The reason I consider Random Access Memories the first, even though I picked them up at the same time, is because, well, this comes before this alphabetically. Don't worry, I will cover Currents at some point. It won't be this mod month. I don't know when it'll be, but I will talk about this record. I'm just uh, so happy that Currents is finally getting the credit it deserves. Back to Random Access Memories, let's talk about this cover art. The design is by Warren Fu and or the Daft Arts team. I couldn't find a straight answer on this. The RAM packaging reflects its heavy 70s and 80s influence. This script that we see on both the front and the back covers references Michael Jackson's Thriller. From the glossy black jacket to the glittery gatefold, the classic red Columbia logo labels, and everything in between. This whole album's promo was very heavy on the nostalgia factor. Man, this album is gorgeous. Listening to it digitally just doesn't compare because you're losing a huge component of the experience not having it physically. I mean, the Red Columbia labels are the icing on top of the cake. Uh, everything about it is a tribute to a lost art. Let me pull out this booklet really quick. The attention to detail here is just bonkers. On Random Access Memories, of course, we have French DJ duo Daft Punk, Thomas Bangleterre in the silver helmet, and Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo in the gold helmet. 
Special guests include Niall Rogers, frontman of disco group Chic. He co-produces quite a few of these tracks. Of course, we have Pharrell Williams. We have a contribution from one of the founding fathers of disco, Giovanni Giorgio Moroder, but everybody calls him Giorgio. Songwriter Paul Williams appears on Touch, producer Todd Edwards on Fragments of Time, Panda Bear appears on Doing It Right, but you might know Panda Bear better as Noah Lennox of Animal Collective, Julian Casablancas of The Strokes is on this thing, and fucking NASA? We'll get to that! I usually shout out session players in this section, but there's truly an endless list of them. Almost a hundred people worked on Random Access Memories once you count in the 70-piece orchestra. There were so many people working on this album, they couldn't fit it all in the jacket. They had to keep all the names in this booklet. I can't name everyone here, but they're all so important to how this album came to be. Just how did this army of people all fit on one record? I'll tell you how, but first... Roll transition. So Disco Connections run through the entirety of Daft Punk's history. See Digital Love and Very Disco off Discovery. If you've been mispronouncing Very Disco for the past 22 years, well, there you go. But the story of Random Access Memories actually starts all the way back in 2008. Yes, this album took five years across five different studios to produce, including Electric Lady Studios in New York City. Electric Lady was Jimi Hendrix's studio, which he named after his own double album, Electric Ladyland. I actually covered this one a few weeks back. Uh, he never really got to use this studio, sadly, but so many classic records have come out of Electric Lady. The instrumentals were recorded throughout studios in the United States, including Electric Lady and Capitol in LA, while the vocals were cut at Gang Studio in Paris. Like I said, Ram was in the works for half a decade before we got to hear it. After completing the Alive tour in 2008, Daft Punk goes back to Paris and promptly gets back to work. They make some demos, but they're temporarily shelved to work on another little project. It's kind of obscure, you may or may not have heard of it, it only the Tron soundtrack for the project that would eventually become Ram, they decide to challenge themselves. They want to make an album using no samples. Well, except for one. Remember when I said NASA was involved in this? In a stunt that only Daft Punk could pull off, NASA allows them to use correspondence from the Apollo 17 mission on the closing song of this album, Contact. I think that's a pretty good excuse to break your no sample rule. I mean, who the hell else could pull that off? Just who else could phone NASA and be like, uh, bonjour, oui, oui, we would like to use samples from Rocket to the Moon. If you watching this by chance are French, then I am so sorry for that. About a year into the production timeline, it's announced that Giorgio will be collaborating with Daft Punk on something. They first contacted Giorgio to work on the Tron soundtrack, but as the soundtrack took shape, as the creative direction changed, the Giorgio song was put on the back burner. But as Ram takes shape as a new disco project, Daft Punk realizes, ah oh mon dieu, this is the perfect opportunity to bring in Giorgio. In an hours long monologue about his life, Giorgio talked about frequenting the first discotheques in the world in 1969 and 1970, and about seeking the sound of the future in his youth, while being completely unaware that he was authoring the sound of the future. Niall Rogers of Chic was on board the project as early as 2010, and 
they'd wanted to work together since Daft Punk's very first record. The three of them did a jam session together. Jamming was integral to the process of assembling RAM. This was all so complex because the project had to be kept a top secret. So much of a secret that it was kept a secret from all of the people playing on it. Now, how in the world would you record instrumentals on a project that's being kept secret from literally everyone on it? I loved hearing about this process from session drummer Omar Hakim. So Daft Punk gave Omar riffs and patterns that they'd written and had him play it all straight on an acoustic set. From there, Daft Punk would take bits and pieces of what Omar had recorded and assemble a sample library of sorts. Kind of like they'd done with Giorgio's monologue. Half the process was done on sheet music. I assume this is most applicable to the orchestra. And the other half was just humming stuff that they'd thought of just completely on the fly. In a day-long jam session, Daft Punk guided Chili Gonzalez playing the piano. Uh, the way a film director gets the performance they need from their actor for a scene. The difference is, Chili had no idea what the scene was. Like, imagine you're an actor, right? And you show up on set to film your scene alone. And the script has all of the other actors' lines blacked out. That is what recording Random Access Memories was like. Okay, so that's how you record your instruments. A little convoluted, but clearly it worked. Now, how would you get your incidental stuff? Getting stuff like this is easy when you're Jimi Hendrix making Electric Ladyland and you basically invite your whole neighborhood to the studio to hang out. But you can't get that same effect when you're bringing in your session players one at a time. So to get what they needed, Daft Punk calls up Warner Brothers Studios. The studio provided Daft Punk with all of their best Foley artists. Those are the people who make sound effects in film. And that's how you get sounds like the running water on Motherboard. By doing all of this, taking bits and pieces from greater monologues, bringing their session players in one by one, having them play for hours and grab bits and pieces from there, and calling up Foley artists. Daft Punk made their sample library out of people. As you can imagine, towing the line of highly composed project and flying by the seat of your pants in five different studios across five years can get really expensive. After what I can only imagine to be one of the fattest studio bills in music history, Daft Punk came out the other side with a double album. That double album, Random Access Memories, goes as follows. <laughs> Opening up side one, we have Give Life Back to Music, then The Game of Love, and side one is closed with Giorgio by Moroder. Opening up side two, we have Within, followed by Instant Crush featuring Julian Casablancas, and closing out disc one, we have Lose Yourself to Dance featuring Pharrell Williams. Opening up disc two, we have Touch featuring Paul Williams, followed by Get Lucky featuring Pharrell Williams and Niall Rogers. And closing side three, we have Beyond. Opening up side four, we have Motherboard, followed by Fragments of Time featuring Todd Edwards. Then Doing It Right featuring Panda Bear, and the album closes with Contact. Random Access Memories was released May 17th, 2013, 10 years ago this month. I'm getting this one out a little early because reasons. That reason is mostly that the 10th anniversary edition of Random Access Memories is coming out this week. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna get it on vinyl. In maybe the most 2013 sentence you'll ever hear, Ram's release was announced on Vine. 
Vine! The Hurricane Tortilla Place! Yeah! The critical reception of Ram is really interesting to me. It's kind of the perfect example of if you get it, you get it, and if you don't, you don't. This album has a wonderful way of bringing people's preconceived notions about what music should be forward. Those who don't get it either default to 90s loop-based, sample-based, entirely digital Daft Punk as being better, or rejecting electronic-based music altogether. Those dang kids with them synthesizers, it just ain't music if they ain't playing instruments. Now back in my day, clearly the praise far outweighed the naysayers because Random Access Memories won Album of the Year at the 2014 Grammy Awards. Listen, I am a Swifty, but I'm sorry, Miss Taylor. Ram deserved Album of the Year. Pharrell's stupid ass hat didn't, but the acceptance speech absolutely did. You know, now that I think of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, you people seem to know a lot more about Vinyl Monday than I do, but Random Access Memories might be the first Album of the Year winner I've ever covered on Vinyl Monday. Of course, being a chronically online Zoomer, I have to mention the Get Lucky Sound of the Summer meme. So there's this Twitter account that tweets, check out Daft Punk's new single, Get Lucky, if you get the chance. Sound of the Summer. Yeah, they just tweet that a lot. Uh, it gets funnier the more time passes. And you know what? Get Lucky was the Sound of the Summer. That damn song is one of the best-selling singles of all time. I can't round out this section of the video without, of course, mentioning that Random Access Memories was Daft Punk's final album. They broke up in early 2021. So, what do I think of the last... Daft Punk Project. For the first time on a regular episode of Vinyl Monday, I'm covering an album that I remember the release of. I remember when Random Access Memories came out. I was 13, about to turn 14, and I really latched on to Instant Crush and touch. I remember how excited I was for this album to drop, and I was so excited because, well, when I was 13, I wanted to be a DJ when I grew up. Really? Only now, as I'm making this video, have I realized just how much of a fixture Daft Punk has been in my music listening. By the time 2018 rolled around, when I bought this copy, I was in college and Daft Punk was still radio silent. I was like, yeah, this is probably their last album. I didn't want it to be, but I'd come to terms with it by the time they announced the breakup. Aside from Get Lucky and maybe Give Life Back to Music, Random Access Memories is aging so well. I think Ram is aging well because of its stylistic influences. Do I think disco in the mainstream was a profound waste of time? Yes. Do I also think that the disco influence is the key to Ram's modern classic status? Also, yes. Whenever anyone says electronic music isn't real music, I point them to Random Access Memories, and here's why. This stuff isn't just written and played. It has to be composed from the ground up. By the sheer scope of this project, Ram had to be composed from the ground up. I'll get more into the sequencing soon, but I'll want to illustrate this point that I'm making now with this aha moment that I had. I never understood the end chord of Touch. I just accepted Daft Punk was ending the song on an unstable chord, unresolved tension, incongruent, but whatever, artist's choice. And then it occurred to me, Oh my god, the end chord of touch is the lead-in to Get Lucky. I was so used to Get Lucky as a single all this time that I was completely missing this moment on the record. That moment right there was all the proof that I needed that 
Random Access Memories was thoughtfully assembled. The whole record boasts a stirring, evocative combination of the human and the inhuman, the organic and the digital. I picked up on this general rule, the light-hearted four-on-the-floor tracks have more organic vocals. See, doing it right, lose yourself to dance, get lucky, and the more lyric-based, tender, emotional songs have auto-tuned or vocoded vocals. This is true for the most lyric-heavy song on the album, Instant Crush. That chorus is a mouthful. Sometimes the best stroke song is also a Daft Punk song, and that's okay. Perhaps Within is so touching because of the vocoding to those who say autotune isn't real singing, meh. I'll suggest something that might adjust your point of view. Think of autotune as an instrument, not as a corrector, mask, or even a voice. It's an instrument. This will help for Within, and it'll really help for those rounds and lose yourself to dance. All of the songs on Random Access Memories follow that vocals rule. Except for one. Whenever someone says that electronic music doesn't have the heart or the soul that real music does, I point them to touch. You're hard pressed to find this kind of emotion in other songs, electronic or not. The composition is just masterful. The build takes the listener on an emotional journey, not just a musical one. The lyrics tell the story of having and losing love, of a robot becoming human. Help, the funky robot DJs have brought me to tears. Touch is the midpoint of the track listing. It's the emotional core of the record, and Daft Punk thinks so too. I'm aware this is one of my hotter musical takes, but I think Touch is one of the greatest songs ever made. But this record is not without its flaws. I struggle with this sequencing. I really do. I'm just not crazy about how this album opens. I don't like the guitar tone on Give Life Back to Music. It's just got too much of all of the cheese ball things that I don't like about disco. But it is very much a statement of intent. It's the thesis of Random Access Memories. Game of Love is okay. However, I recognize these songs' importance to Giorgio by Marauder. In a lot of ways, Giorgio is the most important song on Ram. Giorgio himself, one of the founding module. fathers of disco, I becomes the vehicle be that the Daft Punk uses to speak to their audience. I want to spotlight this line in particular. Once, Once you free, free your mind about, about a concept of concept harmony of and music being correct, music you can do whatever you want. There was no preconception about what to do. While yes, it is Giorgio talking to us, it's mostly Daft Punk. One of the drawbacks of being a masked, mostly anonymous artist is that you can't really talk to your audience, but you can communicate through the music. At first, I was a little disappointed that the kick at the end of Giorgio wasn't a lead-in to another song, but instead, I thought that those few measures were the heartbeat of the record. That kick is the life force of so much of what's happening on Random Access Memories. Giorgio begins what I feel is a god-tier six-song run on this album. Giorgio within Instant Crush, Lose Yourself to Dance, Touch, and Get Lucky. I mean, come on, it's a great single. There are great three-song, four-song, even five-song runs on the greatest double albums of all time. Ram has six! Six! But another sequencing rough patch for me is Beyond Motherboard and Fragments of Time. I feel bad for Motherboard. It's another immensely important song to the journey of Ram, but it just gets lost in the fray. There's this liquid sound through motherboard like water. Water sustains the human. Humans will die without water. No, you cannot just live on black coffee and diet coke, you heathens. But water kills the machine. As for doing it right, 
If loving doing it right is wrong, then I don't want to be right. It baffles me that I enjoy doing it right as much as I do, even though it's the epitome of this album's two greatest flaws. Number one, it's repetitive as hell. Welcome to the entire history of dance music, I guess. And two, it goes on for just a couple minutes too long, but I can forgive that. Remember, this album is made by DJs. They account for crossfading, cutting tracks together, all that nonsense. Stuff that you have to think about if you're playing your music in a club. Contact. Oh my god. Uh, this song has the only sample on the entire record from the Apollo 17 mission. That one sample was masterfully used. I feel like I'm watching the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey. I think someone on YouTube has synced up contact with the end of 2001. If I can find it, I will link it here. I'm still torn on whether Random Access Memories truly was a statement of finality from Daft Punk, but Contact feels like it. There's no better way for Daft Punk to end than killing the machine. You really have to spend time with this album. Give it a listen, or two, or five, or ten, but I promise it's rewarding. It's nostalgia fuel, of course, but once you dig in, I promise it is so much more than that. With this album, Daft Punk reckons the human with the inhuman, and it's even more relevant now than it was ten years ago, I think, of the advent of AI. Daft Punk had been exploring this theme of human and machine for a long time, but I feel as though here they finally mastered it. On Random Access Memories, the mask, or rather, the helmet, finally fell. That's why this is my favorite, and only, disco album. My personal favorites are Giorgio by Moroder, Within, Instant Crush, Lose Yourself to Dance, Touch, and Contact. Remember, if you want to keep up with all of my favorites from all of the Vinyl Mondays, I have a Spotify playlist linked in my description. I update it every week. And that is it. That is Daft Punk's Random Access Memories 10 years later. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of thoughts on this one, so what do you think? Leave a comment letting me know. I love hearing what you guys have to say about albums I love. And if you like what I do here, you should like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post new episodes of Vinyl Monday every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Thank you so much for watching, and whatever is coming, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!